Welcome. You are now watching Boss Lady News, highlighting businesses, nonprofits, events, talent. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Miss Britt Johnson. everyone and thank you for tuning in to Boss Lady News. I'm excited to have you here with us today. You know you can always reach out to me bossladynews at gmail.com. We've got an amazing show for you. We're going to be talking with some awesome people from the New England area. Our first guest is Alda Witherspoon. She's been doing some amazing things with the young people out there and she's putting some collaborations together I'm super excited to tell you all about. We're also going to speak with Fabian Alicine. I hope I said that name correctly. But what's so important about talking with her today is she's the only individual I know that's such an advocate for special education and helping family, families become their own advocates in schools. We're also going to get a chance to speak with DeMarc. I know you guys have seen him on some of my social media. He is going to be talking with us during our Real Tea, Real Tea Time segment. But also, he brought a guest with him, and he's going to talk to us about fitness and finance. Who doesn't love fitness and finance, right? And these guys look amazing. Everyone's like, they look like bodyguards. Yeah, they're my personal bodyguards. That's a lie, but I'm gonna you know, say that for now. We're also gonna get a chance to speak with Jimmy Kang. Yes, we finally have him in the studio. I'm super excited about that. He's got some amazing new opportunities going on with the boutique out in Worcester. And why wouldn't we wanna know what's going on in central Massachusetts? All of Massachusetts is just as important. And there's amazing opportunities that we can find out about. So I'd like you guys to put your hands together for our first guest, Miss Alda Witherspoon. today. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Please grab a seat. All right. Now, I'm excited because this is our first time having you on to yes. kind of talk about what's going on with the Witherspoon Institute. Indeed. But for all of our new viewers and people just getting a chance to meet you, are you originally from the New England area? I am. I'm a native Bostonian. Okay. <laughs> and did you always feel as if you had like this passion to work with young people? It was always something that was um, early bred in me in terms of helping people in the community just in general. I started working when I was 11 year old at, uh, at camp, you know, right. and so I was always a helper, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but the arts came to me through a um, test that the city of Boston gave. Okay. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, when I was coming up, they gave you a test to see what your propensity was, right? Okay. Whether it was English or math or science, and mine came up arts, and so they sent me to this magnet school called the Mackey School and I've been on the track of arts ever since. Wow and you know unfortunately there's not really um, educational schools out there that can cater to what a child is really good at but when it comes to the Witherspoon Institute you not only cater to what some of the young people are good at but you are also molding them into their better selves. Tell us a little bit about the Witherspoon Institute. So the Witherspoon Institute is 15 years old. Um, we started as a mm -hmm. program with the Jack and Jill's Mothers mm -hmm. Association, mm -hmm. uh, which is an international mothers group of African American women. And it started off as a ball. Mm -hmm. And the second year they decided not to go with it, and, but many people in our organization felt that it should be something that we brought to the community. And so we started doing children's balls, yeah. teaching leadership, etiquette, and ballroom dance. Mm -hmm. And so we did that for about the first 13 years. But a few years ago, my church, New Hope Baptist Church, commissioned me to write a play, a Christmas play. Mm -hmm. And um, I... So wait a minute. Oh. You're also a producer. Right. Yes. You're a theater <laughs> producer. Yes. Keep going. So, um, so my um, church commissioned me to write a piece, um, which I eventually called Unto This House the King of Kings is Born. And it's been presented um, several seasons at Madison Park Community Development Corporation. Congratulations. Yeah. So, um, so we've been doing really well with that. And then um, the city of Boston commissioned me uh, to come and do a theater arts program over at the Tobin Center. Yes. So we just did a big fabulous thing over there um, called Wise, mm -hmm. the musical. And mm -hmm. so we brought a lot of people from the community. Uh, Tamika Bridgewell, um, yes. she is a fabulous artist. She yes. played the Wicked Witch, as mm -hmm. it were. Um, and then we had 
Um, you know, Nahim Garcia, he was our um, a producer in residence, as it was, sort of whispering in my ear, you know, over the phone, do this, do that, work with this person, work with that person. Yeah. So we ended up working with Joe May, uh -huh, uh, dance uh -huh. company out in Hyde Park. That was and exciting. It was exciting. It was exciting. Derek Quest um, mm -hmm. ended up being our theater teacher. Yeah. So we had a lot of name brands in the community um, really getting in there and working with the children and offering their skills and their support. Right. Right. And I feel it's so important that the young people recognize that these leaders are in their community. Exactly. Because um, not often do they get a chance to see that. We're going to cut to a brief break, but we actually have some footage of the play. <laughs> so, you know, the viewers will get a chance to see that as well. You guys, make sure you're staying tuned. Nasty like my grandma's house. I know, but we gonna, we, we gotta play it cool. At least you got a married, you know what I'm saying? Do y'all see? Do y'all see what I see? Whoa. Yeah, we see it. It's your dreamscape, girl. Her honor, Empress Cruz. It's basically the sweet little visit for presentation. Please enter the throne room. Your Highness, the queue. Please welcome. Master Winston Wise, Master Cornelius Catch, Master Free Pickett, Miss Noni Nikon, Miss Sherman Davis, and Miss Telly Ritchie. Well, 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 what do we have here? <clears throat> well, my name is Winston Wise. Oh, I know all that try to double cross me. Wait, hold on. We didn't try to double cross you. Oh, yes. Your Master PQ does teach the Mighton's manners. But what of you, Telly? Did your play mom teach you how to cross your legs and say please? Well, my mom is the best. Don't talk about her. How do you even know about her anyway? <laughs> do they think me a fool? No. We believe they're trying to steal your precious jewels. Steal the jewels! Steal the jewels! We told me you were coming out. We came to the room. Hey. Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> Look at the mics and they spin around. Train, brain, and body from to confound. They hunter into my world like they belong. Covet my very jewels. He does what I despise. Look at him, look what. it's so important that people know that these plays in the parks, these opportunities for young people, you know, you guys, you put your kids to sing for the family, you put them to act, you put them to do modeling, and there's so many opportunities out there, and the Witherspoon Institute is one of the ways where the kids can show off their talents. Absolutely. Uh, we were privileged to have uh, a modeling instructor um, this season as well. Uh, she's been working with us for several years. Her name is Britt Johnson. Yes. <laughs> my pleasure. Absolutely my pleasure working with the young people. You're really amazing with the young people, honestly. I mean, they may come in all gangly and, and so forth, but by the time they leave, they have some eloquence, they have some stance, they have posture, yes, yeah, yes. their stage presence and their ability to come in and command a room 
definitely is noticeable by the time you get finished working with them. You're Thank excellent. you. Thank I you for working it. with us. Oh, no problem. <laughs> and I feel like more more people of the different generations shouldn't be afraid to work with the young people because Absolutely. they're like sponges. They mm -hmm. want to sponge the whole thing up. Um, but you don't do this alone. No. So who are some of the <laughs> other intricate pieces with it? Yes. Yeah, so this season, actually, we're going to be working with the YMCA. Nice. Um, we're going Congratulations. To become, yes. Thank you. We're going to become a partner of theirs, and we're going to have two sites this fall, which we're working out the details. Um, but we're really interested in working with them. They're celebrating their 175th year anniversary. Oh, wow. One may not know they started in England, so they're actually an international huh. organization. That's cool. Mm -hmm. It's time to get international. <laughs> <laughs> so what and how can people get in touch with you? And um, are they able to jump on to being a uh, Witherspoon Institute student? Mm -hmm. So um, our students have started as young as five. They're really supposed to start at seven, but literally every season, somebody comes in and begs me for their child to become, you know, mm -hmm. part of the Witherspoon Institute. We go to um, age 23, mm -hmm. um, and we have adults that are in it as well. So we actually ended up having three companies. We mm -hmm. had the little kids that were like five to 12. Then we had the teens that were 13 to um, 19. And then we had the adults. Um, so again, Tamika, she was a parent, right? Yes. So her daughter Madison was actually in the program. And then, um, you know, she comes from an illustrious uh, background in theater. Her mother uh, was the original, um, uh, you know that in uh, The Wiz, the lady who has the, um, the, the, the fan that goes across, you see it on the, on the Wiz. Okay. When you, right. She's the original. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. So she comes from a, a long background Blood in the arts. Of it. Right. So we're like really interested in, um, and get deeply engaged with not only those that work in the classroom, but those that work in administration as well. We have Dr. Keith Motley, who mm -hmm. sits on our board. Uh, we have Charlotte Gola Ritchie, who sits on our board. Um, Gail, um, Scott from Down Home Delivery. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so we have a great deal of people, not only that you see when you come to the classroom, but those in the background that sort of help us think through all of these processes. Uh, this type of program doesn't happen on its own. It's very right. expensive. You know, we have to do fundraisers and all kinds of things to, you know, okay. keep it going. And so we're so enthralled that, you know, <laughs> we have people from all ages and backgrounds that, that, that have involved. really helped us keep going and keep right. our oars in the water. So we are going to have to let you go, but I know we want to have you back on. We oh, want to see more that the young people <laughs> are doing. But before we go, there's a Witherspoon code. Yes. That I'd love for you to share with our viewers. Oh, my gosh. Um... Walk tall in your convictions. Your strut is the beat of life. Live in your rhythm. It's the music you naturally strive. Thank you so much, Alda. I want to make sure Thank you come you. back on Please. and encourage people to find out more about the Witherspoon Institute. We're going to take a brief break, and when we come back, you guys will get a chance to meet Miss Fabian. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Boss Lady News. So how was work? It was 1,300 hours. My math class from 302 was in the trenches. Davy Roth had it the worst. Fractions were coming at him left and right. He just didn't get the damn things. Two days ago, I tried to teach him what one fourth of one half was using different sizes of blocks. Yesterday, I tried again by dividing up pizza. Both missions failed. Oh, no. But today, I was ready. I created a combat math game where the only way to beat the enemy is to outfraction them. Davy conquered every last denominator. My game was so successful, the principal is deploying it to math squadrons all over the school. Anywho, how was your day? Oh, uh, today my boss treated the office to salad wraps. Hmm, <laughs> salad wraps. I know. <laughs> Thank you for staying tuned to Boss Lady News. You guys know you can always reach me on any of my social media. You can check out, um, you can actually Google hashtag Boss Lady News. You can also Google hashtag Boss Lady Does Real Estate. Now we're going to get a chance to speak with Miss Fabian. Why don't you come on out here? Yay. Hey. Thank you. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Please have a seat. I wanted to make sure that, first of all, this isn't the first time that you come on to the set, but I want to make sure that people 
realize that there are others out there in the um, advocacy community mm -hmm. that have young people that are going through it and they've learned how to navigate through it such as you did. Um, but first and foremost, are you originally from the New England area? No, I'm not. I am originally from Haiti. I, um, when I came here, I went to New York. I went to Brooklyn College okay. and transferred go to Worcester and Becker College and then travel. I did um, exchange program in London and Florida. So I was all over places until I said, okay, you know what? I think Boston is smaller than New York. I don't want to go back. So here I am. Right. So. I am so <laughs> not a New Yorker. But we accept all transplants. Yes. yes <laughs> definitely. Now, how did you kind of find yourself becoming an advocate in the educational system? Um, my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, so when she was like four or five years old, and um, I kind of noticed something was like kind of off. But when she started pre-K, and the, everybody said, oh yeah, she'll get it, you know, every kids learn different ways. And, and I trust the system, she's my only child. So I believe that they know better, the teachers knows better. And, and I keep going with it. Right. So going first grade, she was, couldn't read. Mm -hmm. um, and then second grade, she's really struggling. She doesn't know her simple math and things like that. And I'm asking, and then the teacher's still saying the same thing. Right. So from now, now third grade, so now she's kind of really uh, been reluctant on certain things. And then you know your child best than anybody else. And mm -hmm. I knew something was not right. So doing testing and doing different things. The school, she was in BPS, the school was not doing justice for her. So right. I put her in private. So they so, pushed her through first grade into second grade, mm -hmm. from second grade into third grade, until you realized, I need to jump in because the yeah. educational system's not doing me it's justice. Not, not at all. So I had to make her, I pull her out of first grade to put her private and make her repeat first grade. Mm -hmm. So from first grade all the way to um, fourth grade, mm -hmm. she was really struggling, even in private, mm -hmm. um, because private and uh, BPS, they kind of work together on the IEP process. Mm -hmm. But even that, they were still not giving the justice system. They were not giving her the right adequate services that she needs. And for people who don't know, what is, what is an IEP? It's an individual uh, um, IEP, Individual Education Development Plan. Okay. So what does that mean is that the child, there's about 13 categories that a child can be able to be in an IEP. And dyslexia is one of them. Mm -hmm. So if you see that they say oh, SLD, um, which is an acronym for them, they will be able to say that um, the child needs some kind of a, has a learning disability. Okay. But they don't put dyslexia in the IEP. Mm -hmm. So they'll put SLD. Dyslexia is a one category itself that mm -hmm. needs help, the child needs uh, support to read. But as a matter of fact, a lot of parents who does it, they'll put SLD and they don't understand what does that mean. So right now people are seeing um, some of the slides that you've provided us with. And uh, if you can kind of mm -hmm. explain these slides a little so bit. So there's two types of dyslexia. You have the acquired dyslexia, which is um, if someone has a, a car accident and then they have a stroke. So they used to be a good reader, and then later on, because of the uh, illness, so they kind of lost that reading process. So that's why they go therapy and things like that. And then you have the development dyslexia, which is you were born with. Okay. And it's not, and it can go from generation to generation. Like for instance, your father can be dyslexic, and then your child can be, you know, be able to be dyslexia. And it can change um, generation as well. So okay. I have families that, you know, father is dyslexic, all kids are dyslexic, mm -hmm. and then the next generation they don't they don't have anything. So it varies, and there's no treat. It's not it's not a disease. Mm -hmm. uh, you were born with it, and that doesn't mean you cannot learn. And you can see there's so many uh, successful people that are dyslexic, but mm -hmm. it's also a struggle as well if you do not have the right services on time. So now we have a law. I mean, you can see on the on this slide you have a typical type of a reader brain, mm -hmm. which is has the uh, three fragments on the um, head and they have the phonemic awareness on it. Where a dyslexic kid, you can see that is missing the two, the middle and at the end. So that's okay. where the phonemic awareness is like, is lacking. Okay. So the child with the right support, they can be able to develop that. Okay. But if they don't have the support by like pre-K all the way to middle school and high school, they, you having a different um, a child in a way. And a lot of those things that affect is social emotional, uh, ADHD, depression, and all different kind of things that can be able to, to affect the child with a dyslexic. Right, brain. and not just to mention that 
you know, children who don't have um, learning disabilities struggle through because mm -hmm. of outside um, effect, uh, outside things that are affecting their education and abilities to focus. And so would you say that the Boston Public Schools, and, and this happens in all sectors, mm -hmm. this happens in the private school sectors, this happens in the parochial school sectors, um, would you say that they're really more concerned with the numbers that graduate versus the children who need additional services. You'll be surprised that there's a lot of kids who graduate and cannot read. Right. I have kids who's in high school, they're reading as a third grade level. Mm -hmm. But the way that I've been looking at the system and how broken it is, um, when you're doing your MCAS in pre-K, or I mean elementary school into middle school, when you're doing the reading, they if you have the um, system so you can be able to teach you can read the questions for you but they will not read the answer mm -hmm. but when you're in third tenth grade you have to pass the MCAS in order for you to uh, graduate right so if you have an IEP they can read the questions and also read the answers for you mm -hmm. so you probably find some kids are you know graduate but that doesn't mean that they can read or they cannot even you know apply for a job right but if you look at the system so they're not really you know helping those kids they actually they harming them so Absolutely. you have about 50 to 60 percent of kids in the juvenile court system cannot read mm -hmm. so this is a pipeline that they are building and i do not take no for an answer i mean i've been fighting to the system since my child was like in kindergarten right. she's going to sixth grade she's supposed to be in seventh grade but i kept her back and it's still a struggle. Right, and so the way I had a chance to get to know you, not just through FII, the Family Independence Initiative, but also through C-Plan. Mm -hmm. um, we only have a couple minutes left, but I want people to know, um, first, how you became a part of C-Plan, and what would you advise parents to, to do as their initial starts? Um, I, part, I was part of C-Plan's, like I was, my daughter was in the parish in our school and I was the one who presenting and then trying to bring parents and as well the school system to be part, to mix together, mm -hmm. not just being working in the silo because um, parents pretty much they're busy, they don't know much that's happening in the school system and I said well we need to educate them, we need to let them know what's happening in the school system, how they can be able to be a partner. Mm -hmm. So that's how I joined Ciplin and um, now I'm doing my own um, infinity group dyslexia in okay. um, Ciplin, so kind of doing workshop, um, assist parents in uh, reading the IEP to see if something is not right and you know how they be able to just be their own advocate for their child. Right. Um, and part of as well, so I not only I advocate here in Boston but also in DC, so where I go in and trying to just work on bills and trying to just talk to Congress and Senate how they can be able to just put more funding in the education and for special ed for the students as well. Absolutely. Um, and how can people get in touch with you? Um, definitely, they can go through C-Plan mm -hmm. and they'll be able to get uh, in touch with me or just email me at F-E-L-I-A-C-I-N at gmail.com. I'm always open and then I'll also um, go to Decoding Dyslexia, which is not national, um, Nonprofit organization, and I work very closely with the executive director Nancy. Okay. And um, we've done so many work, like October is Dyslexia Month, so we are doing so many different activities that's going to be in the library in Boston, and also lighting the bridge that will be in October 19. Just to any case, it's not just dyslexia, anybody who's in our IEP mm -hmm. or special ed, special mm -hmm. ed um, kind of a system, mm -hmm. so they can be able to meet other families and let them know that they are not alone. This is not a um, a journey that you can battle by yourself. Exactly. It's, it's very dry, it's very toxic, um, and you cannot be doing this by yourself. So gotcha. Decoding Dyslexia is another channel that they can contact me and ask questions and either one of us will be able to just get well, back to you on Thank that. you so much because it's important for families out there to know you really have to speak up if you're going to be supporting yourself or your children and um, Fabian has been amazing and encouraging people and myself to be um, active in the schools that our children are in. I want to thank you for coming on to the show. Sure. We're going to make sure we follow up with you. Definitely. And you guys don't go anywhere because we've got the the two muscle-bound men that'll be coming on <laughs> next and I'm excited for you guys to find out more about them and we've got real tea time for you so don't go anywhere we'll be right back Marie you have pre-diabetes pre-diabetes I don't have time to eat right or exercise I'm a busy mom oh you're a busy mom yeah 
This is great news. Busy moms never get prediabetes. Wait, what? Let me just... Yeah, this is all the people at risk for prediabetes, and way over here, busy moms. No? Whew. Cost of family time activities getting you down? Hello, I'm Dr. Spruce. If you or someone you know needs a healthy dose of nature, visit discovertheforest.org to find out which park or forest is closest to your family. Acorns are not real currency, but that's okay because parks or forests are either free or super affordable. It's a truly economical way for the whole family to enjoy each other's company and bond beyond the confines of concrete buildings and rush hour. See on page four that the projections need to be blood. Next Thursday? Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So, I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Testing. Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. You made your house a reality. Homeschooling yourself on loans, color coding listings, and flushing every toilet in a 20 mile radius. If you can ace house hunting, you can do it for retirement. Get on track with tips at aceyourretirement.org. Thank you for staying tuned to Boss Lady News. We're going to get a chance to speak with Mr. DeMarc Davis, and we're going to be taking on, right now, our Realty Time segment. And now we're going to get a chance to speak with Mr. DeMarc Davis. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Pretty good. How are you doing? Good. All right. I'm nice a to see you again. No, that's fine. So I'm excited to have you on. All right. Uh, this isn't my first time seeing you in the BNN production mm -hmm. studio because you would come on for Alexi Edwards' real t uh, realty time. He would have a show, the Alexi Edwards show. Right. Yeah. And he used to throw people under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that was my first introduction to you, mm -hmm. and then it was awesome finding out that you were a real estate agent right. and that I was going to be working in the office with you. Right. And during Realty Time, mm -hmm. this segment, we actually talk about, you know, just real estate in general. Okay. So first and foremost, though, are you originally from the New England area? No, I'm not. I'm originally from Jamaica. Okay. That's where, I'm from. That's where the accent's from, yeah, huh? <laughs> So did you feel like, like as you were growing up, as you were younger, mm -hmm. did you feel like you'd be an entrepreneur? Did you feel like you'd be interested in owning property or being I mean, an agent? I've always felt like I would be an entrepreneur, not so much in, so much in the real estate field, mm -hmm. but from my grandmother to my grandfather, they were always um, selling stuff around me. Right. Yeah, selling food or selling bleach or something. So right. I always had that around me. So while going to school, I was like, hey, I might try that because I see them with money. I want money, so I think that's the way to go. <laughs> right. So that We're affected by our influences. Exactly, exactly. And that was my immediate influences. Yeah. So I think that basically just um, pushed me to becoming yeah. an entrepreneur. Yeah. yeah. So what got you actually into real estate? What made you say, you know what, I'm going to try this out? All right. So real estate is very interesting. I was doing network marketing before. Network and I marketing. Pitched, um, my company to Alex. Okay. And then he created a bet like, hey, you get your real estate license, um, I'll sign up for your company. I'm like, what? This is easy. I got my license and he signed up. Mm -hmm. And then I just quit the company and started doing <laughs> real estate. So from there on, that's where the journey started up until this day. Okay. So it was successful for you. That's why you were like, I think I'm just going to go was, ahead with it this. Was, um, I saw more opportunity there. I had more control over my time and what I was doing Right. Um, versus um, network marketing where it was I needed a team initially. Mm -hmm. But with real estate, is what, it, everything was based on my performance. Mm -hmm. So I started off doing what I um, was taught to do. I saw the results and then I just pursued everything after that. And 
right. it's, it's great. So I'm always trying to tell people when they say, oh, I want to be a real estate agent. No. I tell them, I'm like, the money's not in being an agent. Right. The money's in owning the property. Right, correct. So first, how do you feel about that? Obviously, you agree with me. I mean, I do agree because I wear both hats. Mm -hmm. I'm an agent and I'm an investor as well. Okay. So I see the benefits of both. Mm -hmm. yes. You said you're an investor. Correct. I know a lot of people out there that want to be investors, but they're afraid. Yep. They're worried that they don't have the funds to start. Right. What made you jump in and say, I'm going to do it? Well, that stemmed from being an agent. You mm -hmm. know, as an agent, you're representing your clients, either they're buyers or sellers. And once you see how the transactions are going where the seller is making such, a, such and such amount mm -hmm. of a deal or the buyer is getting such a phenomenal property that they're going to end up renting out or something, you're like, hey, I want to do that as well right. because that's the end goal. Mm -hmm. So being an agent and you know basically saving up to have the capital to invest, um, that's how I got into investing. So mm -hmm. I bought my first investment property mm -hmm. and then from there on I'm like, hey, I think I might venture into the whole flipping. And I started off flipping, did um, wholesaling, mm -hmm. just several um, parts of investing yeah. in real estate. And so when I tell people again, you know, that the the money is not in the the agent, mm -hmm. right? I say that because there's a lot of work that comes behind working with your clients. Right. There's a lot of time and catering mm -hmm. that comes behind working with your clients. Right. And the end result of the transaction is the client right. ends up getting the bulk of the benefit back from right. that. And I feel like uh, enough people just don't kind of understand some of those other um, opportunities, mm -hmm. which you mentioned. You mentioned the wholesaling. You right. mentioned the the buyer who's getting an investment property right. for rental income. Right. You mentioned being the investor that's right. going to flip. Right. So how have you found kind of each one of those different pieces? Like, mm -hmm. is there one that you like better than the other? I mean, I think everything kind of interconnect because mm -hmm. being the agent, you get to see the opportunities that are out there. So that's your advantage over other investors. You have the MLS, mm -hmm. you can find deals, um, you find uh, sellers that are looking to get rid of the property. So instead of you marketing it to a client, you can become the client. Mm. So that's where you benefit from um, being the agent. Right. Then as the buyer, obviously the rental income, if you're using it as an investment property, mm -hmm. you're gonna have that residual income every month along with your commissions or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then as the seller know, that particular property that you have, if you want to get rid of it, you know the market, you know how much you're going to make, you know who the buyers are, so everything just connects. Right. And then you just cash out either way. Now, a lot of young people are looking at the wholesaling, yes. right? There's all these YouTube videos mm -hmm. about being a wholesaler. Right. Can you explain to them a little bit about, like, what is a wholesaler? I mean, you're basically just a middleman. Um, for example, the agent is the person connecting the buyer and the seller. You're doing that without a license, mm -hmm. without a license, connecting the buyer and the seller as well. So you're selling a contract. Mm -hmm. Me so much, I'm not too big into wholesaling because you know I'm a real estate agent and you don't want to have too much conflict, but it works. Mm -hmm. I prefer to work with a lot of wholesalers when they have a deal. As an investor, you bring that property to me, I benefit, you benefit, and right. the seller or whoever benefits as well. So here's a question. A lot of people might feel as if they can't save mm -hmm. to invest. They can't save mm -hmm. to buy a house. What sacrifices have you made? Or have you even made sacrifices? Was it just easy for you? I mean, nothing has been easy. We all have to sacrifice. Because, for example, you might like clothes. Mm -hmm. Instead of buying a Gucci belt or a Gucci shirt for $500, you can use that $500 and set aside mm -hmm. every month. That $500 adds up. Maybe it's a year or two years. You save your down payment for your first home. Right. That one home can then lead to five more. Right. Because you can refinance, you can get a line of credit. There are several different ways where you can um, leverage that one house. Right. So getting into it is, I'd say, the hardest part, but it's possible. Because if you look at the things that we as a people spend money on, mm. at the end of the day, it's worthless. Right. You know what I mean? So we need assets, not liabilities. Uh -huh. And we all get a lot of liability Preach. at times. You know what I mean? so, yes. Preach. Right. So um, you're also a model. Yes. You're also <laughs> into fitness. Yes. And you're also doing a clothing line, which you're Alexander so Berto. nicely wearing. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> How have
have you found yourself being able, and we only got one minute before we take okay. a break, but how have you found yourself being able to kind of balance these different hats? Well, it all begins with discipline. Mm. I use the gym Wait, as say that again. discipline, uh -huh. right? I use the gym as the main example of that. Wake up every morning, go to the gym, do my routine. So that same discipline I apply to the gym, I use it towards my finances. Mm -hmm. I use it towards life. I use it towards family. I use it towards everything else. That's where the balance comes in. Because if I'm going to spend X amount of time in the gym, I have to balance that time with family, or they're going to feel like they're left out, then you can't let your finances suffer because you're right. going to feel like you're left out. <laughs> right. So that's where you just apply a little bit of discipline to everything. Oh, that's the key and word. Yes. That is the word of like 2020. Because <laughs> let's just speak like future right now, exactly. right? Speak it into existence. Building up your discipline. Right. So we're going to take a brief break. Okay. And when we come back, you brought a guest. Yes, Joey, to Joey the Greek. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited to okay. um, have him come out as well. Yes. So you guys don't go anywhere. We've got another muscle bound man coming out for <laughs> <Okay>. you. <laughs> we'll be right back. reality. Homeschooling yourself on loans, color coding listings, and flushing every toilet in a 20 mile radius. If you can ace house hunting, you can do it for retirement. Get on track with tips at aceyourretirement.org. We got plenty of superheroes in our community, and I'm so excited to be bringing most of them, or many of them, here to you. So now we've got Joey the Greek coming out. Okay. I'm a hugger. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you for coming. What's going on, big boy? Have a seat. <clears throat> so this is your time. You're taking over. So tell me a little bit about Joey right. and why you wanted to bring him out. So I met Joey in the gym. Phenomenal guy. When it comes down to business, when it comes down to being a friend, and um, obviously we have fitness in common. Mm -hmm. So pitch an idea to Joey. Obviously we're in the gym every day lifting weights, and we're successful at that. Mm -hmm. so I said, hey, Joey, if we're in the gym every day being successful at fitness, why not apply that to the real world, like finances and everything? It's like, hey, good idea. Mm -hmm. And then we started sharing um, similar ideas, and we're here today. Okay. So we have a clothing line, right. Alexander Berto. Okay. So we can right. tell you a little bit about what he does and... How are we going right, to take over? Right. How are you going to take over? Right, Tell yeah. me, Joey, so, how are you going to take over? So, I mean, I've, I've been in the gym for, you know, probably a decade or so. So, wow. Um, what happened when I saw when I saw D at the gym, uh, I noticed a lot of similar characteristics, similar qualities. So, when when I when I when I met D, we started working out together and then, you know, as you work out, you build a friendship, you build a bond, and during that time, I started noticing similarities in the way we think cuz, you know, he's all about, you know, uh, entrepreneurship and making money and being the best that you could be and I'm like wow, that's, and that's challenging, challenging people, people exactly. <laughs> so I was like it aligns very you know it aligns perfectly with with me my my uh, my uh, how I conduct myself right mm -hmm. so we thought you know let's put our minds together let's um, build something that you know could put Boston on the map because fitness is, is a gl it's global right right but there's specific areas specific demographics that uh, promote it more than other places like for example you know, Florida, mm -hmm. my, you know, Miami specifically. Right, California. like the warm weather places. Right, right. You don't really get it, right, right. you know, so, fitness too right. much in the so cold places. So here, there's not a lot of people that are into it. You know, there's people that work out just to stay healthy, but 
um, it's not as large. So, you know, we thought maybe we'll put our minds together right. and uh, really start promoting and put Boston on the map. Yeah. And as important as it is to be fit, people do it kind of like socially. Yeah. Like they right. do it because it's cool right. Right, right. versus having the passion and the drive right. to feel as if I should start my day with this right. every single day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being in there for so long, right. how did you get to the point where you were making that disciplined decision that I'm gonna do this every day? Right, right. Yeah. So what happened was, um, it was, I've always lifted from when I was like 15 years old. It wow. was something that I did, you know, a couple times a week. But uh, it was when I hit 2021 20, that I was like, let me take this a little bit more serious. And then when I started taking it more serious with my training schedule and the way I ate, I started seeing results rapidly. Mm -hmm. So when I started seeing results rapidly, I was like, I don't want to stop. And I noticed like, you know, how rapidly it was coming, how much stronger I was getting, how much my physique was changing, that, um, that I thought, you know, Maybe this, maybe maybe I'm gifted in a specific way that I should continue this, right? right. You know, and uh, if down the line, uh, I've hit some very um, impressive numbers on the bench press. My name's on the wall right. at our gym at the number one spot. Right. Okay. <laughs> so you know, I've been invited to. I don't know if, if you guys know C. T. Fletcher. Right. Um, he's huge in L. A. Uh, he has a gym called Iron Addicts. I was invited to Iron Wars. Um, there was a battle that uh, the gym battle, gym gang, which is based out in New York, right. and uh, Iron Addicts, which is based out in LA. I mm -hmm. was I was affiliated with Gym Gang, and they wanted me to represent them at uh, at the Gym Gang versus Iron Addicts battle. Wow. Uh, however, weather caused the flight to be canceled, so I couldn't have gone. I couldn't. Right. I couldn't go, unfortunately. But you know. Uh, Damn airlines. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Got to invest some money in right. that. So we're gonna have one soon. Right. Too. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're, we're you gotta invest small. some money right, in right, that. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. So you know, like it's like fitness is such so global that you can make friends and you can collab collaborate with people across the globe. Right. You know, I've spent time in in Colombia. I spent months in Colombia. I spent months in Dominican Republic, and uh, you know, based off of you know my presence in the gym, I've you know inspired people in the gym and outside of the right. gym who you know no, don't see somebody who stands out like that. And they get they they get motivated by just by your presence. Right. Right. You know, a lot of times here in, in Massachusetts, we're so focused on, um, you know, which is good, focused on finances and money and stuff like that, but there's, there's other, other aspects of life, right? So it's, it's better not to be one dimensional, but to be multiple dimensional, right. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so when, you, when, you, when you're a well-balanced person, I think when you walk by somebody, they see that, you know, your finances look correct based off your- The full package. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. the full package, full package. physique is, is on point, so that so inspires a lot of people. So let's talk about like being prepared yeah. to get this clothing line jumped off, right? Okay. right? So how did you guys bring this into fruition? Mm -hmm. And what is your next like plan? Okay, so with Alexander Bertel, um, the name came about from my grandfather. Mm -hmm. His first name is Alexander, and his nickname is Bertel. Okay. So I'm like, hey, let me just put these two together, and the name turned out phenomenal. Right. Right. To me, I thought it was like a French designer. <laughs> <laughs> He's Jamaican, Sounds right? Like it. Right. So um, started off with t-shirts. Um, mm -hmm. We're gonna be making men's clothing, men's clothing, along with. Some stuff for the females. Can we can't leave them all. He out? already forgot about me no, today. No, he forgot I about do my have the shirt. I do have the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> At the lady making the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what we're trying to do is just get the name out there. We've mm -hmm. been getting a lot of positive feedback. Um, we've seen a lot of high end, high end um, designers. Yeah. And they're very expensive, but in our um, society, we don't see a lot of nice stuff that's affordable. Right. We want to make it affordable and also classy. Right. So that a lot of our young people can. You know, know how it, know it, know how it feels to dress like appropriate for certain, right. like probably interview something um, formal. Right. You know, something not too casual, but. And there's high -end. not a lot of businesses that are concerned right. with making sure it looks good exactly. and it's affordable. Exactly. It's like you either get one or the other. Right. It right, looks right. good and it's expensive, right. or it's affordable and it's going to fall apart as right, soon as you right, wash it. Right. So I think that's really important that yep. people know that they can get something that they can put against like right. a nice suit right. and be able to like Justin Timberlake it out. Right. Yeah. And then the next key piece to it, to, um, when we stem back to fitness, We'll help you to um, get the body that you want in order to show off the shirt because your body is what you're presenting. Okay. So, we'll so it's a lifestyle it's a and life t-shirt. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I really like that. Exactly. And I think mm -hmm. that we're promoting physical fitness and financial fitness. So it's not just about how you look. Right. It's about how you look, 
um, physically or you look on paper, your network, all that stuff. Teaching our society what it is like to become wealthy. Yes. That's right. what we teach. So I know people are going to want to know how to get in touch with you. I mean, from this, they're going to be like, are you ready for fashion shows? We're you know, ready. Or are you going to do some sure. of the fashion shows? You're going to bring the, the lines out. So how can they get in touch with you? How can they get in touch with you? Absolutely. So you can find me on, on Facebook, Demark Davis. Um, Instagram, Demark Davis as well. My cell number is 857 oh, 334 He's giving the cell number, guys. <laughs> Write this down. Absolutely. 857-334-0429. <laughs> Email address is at gmail.com. And once more, it's demarkadavis at gmail.com. Okay. And um, you can reach me at um, my Instagram handle is Joey the Greek at Joey the Greek. Um, and my email address is Joey the Greek one Joey the Greek was taken. So Joey the Greek one <laughs> at gmail.com. Uh, but uh, Instagram would be the best method of contact. For yeah, you. and if people want to come down to the gym, if they mm -hmm. want, you know, someone to advocate, you mm -hmm. know, for them or to them right. to get fit, can they come down to the gym? Is are, are you guys doing training as well? So we're taking it um, one step at a time. Of course, they can um, consult us for fitness tips, but on the personal training side, not as yet. We're developing our program where okay. it mm -hmm. can be global, not just on. Um, face-to-face -face interaction, but you can be at home and say, hey, we're doing a such and such a program, so we're working on, on that right now. Okay. Also, we have a YouTube channel. It's yes. called The Trainer, mm -hmm. and that's the hyphen trainer, where we're just gonna be uploading videos about fitness, lifestyle, or clothing, real estate, everything that we're talking about. You'll see like vlogging and all of all that, that on stuff. there. Exactly. So I'm excited to have you guys come back because okay. we discussed this, but we didn't do it for this show. Okay. We're going to do like a less than 10 minute demo okay. on what you guys do in the gym. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> We're ready for that. I need some of my uh, viewers to make sure they come out to the studio okay. and partake in that. Um, thank you for coming on to the show. I'm excited to a have pleasure. you guys on Appreciate and have it. you back. And you guys don't go anywhere. We've got one more guest for you. I'm super excited and you guys are watching Boss Lady News, feel free to email me, bossladynews at gmail.com, with any upcoming events, um, people that I should know, or nonprofits that we should highlight. Don't go anywhere, though. We'll be right back. It appears these hot ashes are about to be dumped, which could possibly start a wildfire. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? The garden hose defense. Next, a thorough stir. Then, another spray. And finally, feeling if the ashes are cool. Oh, yeah. oh yes, the selfie. A ritual practiced so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. Thank you for staying tuned to Boss Lady News. And I've been trying to get this young guy onto my set here at BNN for some time now. But please put your hands together for Jimmy Kang. Hey, Britt. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Great. Very good. I'm so glad you're back from traveling. Yes, I am. I'm like, Jimmy, do you think you can come <laughs> on on Saturday? He's like, yeah, after Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> after Tuesday, I could come on. We'll figure that out. So for every people know who you are. Mm -hmm. I've kind of aired our interview from Worcester before. Yeah. But for people that aren't familiar with you, first, are you from the New England area? Well, I'm from L.A., but I've been living in New England for the past 14 years in Worcester, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and pretty much been in the music game since then. Yeah. Now, you do so many kind of pieces within the entertainment industry. You're wearing multiple hats. You're wearing the, the boutique owner hat. You're mm. wearing the management hat. You're wearing the studio manager hat. Yeah. So tell us some of those different titles that you're actually Well, you know, I'm the having. CEO of Straight Up Entertainment. Uh, we've been running nightclubs and promotions for a long time, but I slowed down on that because I became the VP of Wu-Tang Management. So I've been traveling with the clan, putting things together. So Wu-Tang management, pretty much, um, we facilitate um, the businesses that Wu-Tang Clan has. So we own, um, you know, we, we put on Protection Neck records for mm -hmm. the affiliates to get signed and different artists, and also Protection Neck distribution for anyone to get distribution deals that's qualified. Mm -hmm. um, we also run Wu-Tang, Wu um, DJ, Wu Worldwide DJ Coalition, mm. along with um, Wu World Wu Tang Radio, that's on all the Android and iPhone apps right now. Mm -hmm. So you could get those to listen to 
all different types of DJs from all over the world that's affiliated with Wu-Tang. Oh, see, you didn't tell me that part. Yeah, we just, we just launched all that. <laughs> you didn't tell me that part. I also part. own an a exclusive boutique where music meets fashion. It's called Exclusives, and that's in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts, 39 Pleasant Street. Come mm -hmm. down and check it out. We also customize T-shirts and everything for the artists and everyone. And we have fashion shows there all the time. We've got yeah. a fashion show coming in there the 27th. Okay. Yeah, with these um, young guys that just came out in Worcester Magazine as like the new fashion guys. So okay. Doing them, putting them in. Also in the studio, it's um, it's a major league. We just named it Major League Media because okay. we're doing everything over there from recording, producing, um, to making beats, to um, designing clothes. I just got those guys in in the studio now, they're working there full time. Okay. We shoot videos, we're editing videos. I don't do none of that. <laughs> you know, I engineer, you got people that yeah, do those I engineer things. and you know, put things together, but I usually stay in the business part of the section yeah. and have everyone that specializes in it in the place because right. I feel like if someone specializes in something, they're better than me. I know some of it, right? but i rather have people that are craftsmen and people that are, you know, specializing in things. Do what they're good it. at. Like, you, you do what you're good at. That's what Absolutely. I try to make sure, you know, people do. Right. Um, you didn't tell me about the whole international DJ collaboration. That's yeah. pretty cool. So just and I'm just going to throw this out there mm -hmm. really quick. I want to be Wu-Tang Clan's real estate agent. So <laughs> how can we get, like, a Wu block going? We could work that's, something out with okay, that. Okay, that's really what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> we want Wu blocks in Boston and in mm. every other state. So I'll help put that together. Okay. Um, but how did you get the internet? national DJ collaboration going that's dope yeah well what, what I did was um, once I got into um, Wu-Tang management um, I traveled the country for like and the world for like a couple years straight I was barely home mm -hmm. um, we're signing everyone for distribution seeing who's out there and you know meeting up with um, all the business people to put them as A&Rs for our team for the management uh, for distribution for the record label part for the DJ coalition part for, you know for everything yeah. so we found we found the missing pieces to put them on top and right now that's one of the reasons you know Wu-Tang's 25th anniversary we're everywhere I was excited you know, about that I went to the concert he took a picture he's like yeah. is that you down there <laughs> I'm like yes it is but first and foremost you know congratulations to all of your success um, congratulations to Wu-Tang's 25 years. I know that there's a lot that kind of happens within the realm of Wu-Tang Wu altogether. Yeah. And just you being a part of that and me getting a chance to, you know, call you right, up and right. be like, hey, Anytime. what's going yeah, on? <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, so, I mean, I guess um, in Boston, there's a lot of um, talent out here. But, mm -hmm. you know, people got to actually um, get together and try to expand in a commercial way. Right. A lot of people don't understand it takes money to blow up. Mm -hmm. You know, they got they got to have their social media presence. They got to get their sound scans up. They got to, you know, um, be on be on everything right now, even Spotify and everything, and boost their numbers up. Right. In order for them to even get involved, some people don't even know they got to register to, um, you know, RIA, RIA and like different things for. Um, to get in the billboard charts. And even what do People, some of those things mean? Because everyone thinks that they so, can social media their life right, through. But then some people don't even register their music to BMI, ASCAP, or anything where they're not even getting royalties or not even getting credited for the music that they're doing. So wow. they're just you know just running around in circles instead of make, making strategic moves right. like some people do in the city to get known. And then they leave the city and then come back once you know once they're doing good. That's once what, they've blown that, up. Yeah, that's what I noticed so far. You know. And how can people get in touch with you? Because um, this is like influential information to change yeah, their business. You can get in touch with me. Um, just come to my store if I'm not on tour. Um, you know, that's on 39 Pleasant Street. I actually started the store because um, I was always buying office, getting office spaces, mm -hmm. and then I was dating this girl where we decided to put. Um, you know, music meets fashion together, yeah. where I could have point of sales while I'm in my office. Right, right. So, you know, try to make that money every day. <laughs> That's right. So, thank you so much for coming on. Of course. And I want to make sure that we can connect people to you. Um, so, yes, we're going to so see what we can put together. Social media, you could um, check me out at Jimmy Kang um, One. That's Jimmy K A N G One for Instagram, um, Jimmy Kang and Facebook. I reply back to people all the time, try to help everyone out, you know. 
I'm doing pretty good in life, so I'm trying to get it right Give for it everyone. Back. In Boston, um, I put on, you know, helped put on um, Crump Snatcher mm -hmm. when he was um, doing really good. We put on Special Teams, which is um, Ed O.G., Jason, and Slane. Nice. Uh, we did really well with that. Slane's in the movies and stuff. I'm actually going to go see Ed O.G. after this because he lives right around the corner. That's right. So it's pretty cool um, to be out here in Boston again doing this because I'm usually going to different cities after cities and you don't really get to hang out. Right, right. Well, again, thank you so much for coming on to Boss Lady News. Yes, And absolutely. we want to have you back on to maybe kind of outline better for mm -hmm. some artists, like what do they need to do to get on your radar right. and probably even DJs and become a part of what it is that you're doing. Right. And so thank you again. Yep. You guys know that you can always reach out to me, bossladynews at gmail.com, and let me know what you guys need. What, who do you want on next? What do you want to know? I got you. Thank you for staying tuned to Boss Lady News. Peace.